Hey guys, this is BuilderDude35 with a tutorial on how to program your robot to detect and react to a stalled motor. A motor stall occurs when the motor is blocked and it cannot move. And it's not necessarily a good thing, because at the very least it could drain out all of your batteries really quickly, and at the very worst it could cause damage to the electronics. Hopefully knock on wood the EV3 motors are actually protected, but it's something that you want to avoid or something that you could actually use to your advantage uh, and use as a tool, but I'll get to that later. This tutorial is going to explain how you can get your robot to detect when a motor is stalled, and you can either use this to avoid damage or use it as a tool. So I'll go into the programming software right now and show you how to do that. So here I have opened the EV3 software, and I have a motor block controlling a medium motor in port A, and it's set just to on at 30% power. Now we don't want it set for rotations or degrees or anything, because the motor is going to be controlled by that instead of the motor power, which is what we want it to be controlled by. So what I'm first going to show you is the motor rotation block, which is under sensor here in this yellow section. What we're going to be looking at here is either measure or compare, and current power is the measurement that we want to look at. Now make sure that your ports match on the motors that you want to use, otherwise they won't be measuring the right motor. And so right now I have it on measure and current power. What this does is it tells you the current power of the motor as a numerical value. So you can export that value out here like that to say another programming block. Now the next thing we can do is compare current power and what this is, it is allows you to set um, the threshold value which is the kind of comparison value so we can say less than or less than or equal to uh, let's say 25 so we can have the robot do some kind of action over here when the power of this motor drops below 25 percent because when the motor stalls what's going to happen is the motor's power drops below what it started at. I have it set at 30, so you have to set it at something like 25, which is less than 30, and then have either less than or less than or equal to as your sign. So now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to start a motor and then have it stop after it's been stalled, and I'll show you two different ways to do that. The first way is the more streamlined way and the way most people are going to do it. You're going to go into flow control and take out a weight block and we're going to set this to motor rotation, compare, and current power. So again, like I said before, we have to set the threshold value as less than the starting value. So I'm going to use 25 and set it as either less than or less than or equal to. And make sure your ports match. So now what this is going to do is wait until this motor's power drops below 25% and we're going to give it an action. And since we want it to stop, we're going to take one more motor block out and we're going to set it to off. So this is just a really simple program now, how uh, we turn the motor on, wait for it to stall, and then shut it off. The second way we can do it is a little bit more complex, but it gives you a little bit more freedom over what you're programming. First we're going to take a loop block out, and then a switch block. What we're going to do is set this to motor rotation, compare, and uh, set it to current power. And then again, we're going to do the same thing with the threshold value that's lower than the starting value, and then less than or less than or equal to. And then what we can do now is we have more flexibility. So let's say this is our yes case. So if the power of the motor does drop below this 25%, what we can do is we can have it execute whatever we want to happen in here, whether that be stopping the motor, which is what I'm doing right now, turn the motor off, and in the no case, we can have it do something else, like, um, I don't know, whatever you would want it to do. But in this yes case, if you want to exit this loop, which goes for infinity, you're just going to have to place a loop interrupt. And so it's going to interrupt loop number one, which we have here. So that's two different ways to have your motor detect and react to a motor stall. Now the one final thing to keep in mind is that whatever you set this threshold value to does affect the sensitivity. So the closer the threshold value is to the starting value, the more sensitive it's going to be. So if you have, say, a mechanism that has a heavy load on it, um, you might want to actually set the threshold value uh, quite a bit lower than what your starting value is instead of 25, say maybe 20, and that reduces the sensitivity. So maybe the motor just naturally has some resistance on it when you don't want it to be stalled, 
and it might accidentally pick up that resistance that's already on there so you're going to set the threshold value lower so that it uh, when it actually is stalled it's actually detecting the stall and not the resistance and the other the really final last thing is is to keep this starting motor power value low so you avoid damaging the motor and whatever gear train or mechanism you have the motor attached to so now that you know how to program this feature you're probably wondering what is this useful for and that's a very good question the first thing that it's useful for you can actually use this motor to stall to your advantage if you have a mechanism that has mechanical limits where the motor stops when you go to the extremes of uh, whatever mechanism it is and what you can do is to zero out the motor you set the motor to drive in a certain direction at say 30 percent power until it reaches one of those mechanical limits in which case the motor is stopped and now your robot can detect when that motor is stopped and it stops the motor and now your mechanism is completely zeroed out and it did that all automatically so that's a very useful thing to use it for. In fact, the first time that I used it was in 2013 when I built my x Terra robot. You can see it reset its claw by opening up the claw all the way. And when the claw stalled, it stopped the motor and then returned x degrees forward to get to the zero position that I wanted. And that's how I originally came up with the idea to use this. And of course, the second thing that you can use this for is a safety feature. If your motor is stalled for a prolonged period of time, it's going to end up like killing your batteries, or you could cause damage to the electronics. So if you're using some kind of robot that might be prone to stalling out, like if it crashes into a wall and then gets stuck, you might want to build a safety feature in there and have the motor shut off if it's stalled for a prolonged period of time. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you liked it, please subscribe for more tutorials, and I'll see you next Thursday with next week's tutorial. Bye.